It's been a roller coaster ride, short, but with a lot of ups and downs. There were warnings from the start. Boris Johnson was not popular in Scotland even before he became Prime Minister. And when he became Prime Minister, he made it immediately clear he'd never sanction another independence referendum. I think it was Nicola Sturgeon herself who said that the referendum in 2014 was a once in a generation. He came to power on the back of Theresa May's failure to get a deal on Brexit and won a landslide majority in 2019 on the back of a simple slogan, Get Brexit Done. He was at his best campaigning in simple, straightforward lines, particularly on Brexit. He was big on headlines, but lacked the substance and attention to detail to be the great Prime Minister he desperately wanted to be. An early signal was the illegal prorogation of Parliament, where he was found to have lied to the Queen. The decision to advise Her Majesty to prorogue Parliament was unlawful. Then he made Brexit happen, which was what many had voted for. <laughs> then Covid struck. He was criticised for being slow to lock down and the NHS struggled to cope. From this evening I must give the British people a very simple instruction. You must stay at home. The virus cost thousands of lives. Hey, thanks for the chair, thank you and almost cost the Prime Minister his. I've taken a test that has come out positive. But vaccines saved thousands more lives. Furlough saved thousands of jobs. Boris Johnson had created a blokey persona with voters, with his tousled hair and crumpled clothes and TV appearances on Have I Got News For You. Many people thought he was a bit of a laugh. They not have that rum, rum, rah, rah that you love. But the joke wore thin at a CBI conference speech when he forgot his lines. Uh, forgive me. And filled the gap with ramblings about Peppa Pig. Who's been to Pans? I've been, been to Peppa Pig World. <laughs> Not enough. <laughs> By this point, people were laughing at him rather than with him. And with revelations of Downing Street parties breaking lockdown rules, the laughter quickly turned to anger. I know my husband would be sick to his stomach as we are. He should go, definitely. I think uh, just with all the garden party stuff as well, I mean, everybody's sort of, I'm not happy just with his actions to be fair lately. Mr Speaker, I want to apologise. And I know the rage they feel with me and with the government I lead when they think that in Downing Street itself, the rules are not being properly followed by the people who make the rules. His defence that he didn't realise he was at a party. <laughs> it, it, it is so ridiculous that it's actually offensive to the British public. It looked bad for Boris Johnson, but Russia's invasion of Ukraine bought him some time. I've said I'm supporting the Prime Minister while he continues to lead the response uh, against the Russian aggression. But then he received a fixed penalty notice for his birthday party in Downing Street when he was famously ambushed with cake. Revelation after revelation followed about Partygate. People had a right to expect better of their Prime Minister. The Sue Gray report into the Downing Street lockdown parties showed failures of leadership and judgement in number 10. Boris Johnson won a confidence vote among his own MPs. The vote in favour uh, of having confidence in Boris Johnson as leader was 211 votes, and the vote against was 148 votes. And therefore, I can announce that the Parliamentary Party does have confidence. Yeah. Less convincingly than he'd hoped, but quickly lost two by-elections, making it clear public confidence had already gone. Voters and Conservative MPs knew what they were getting when they backed Boris Johnson as Prime Minister, a man who had been sacked from previous jobs for lying, but had carried the celebrity of being known by his first name. Boris was a star, like Trump in America. He broke out of the political mainstream. But eventually, the shine was worn away by the scandals.